We got there in the end, eh? It might have taken a collapse. The fan base falling apart a little bit online. And a penalty shootout. We got there in the end. Manchester United are through to the FA Cup final. We don't need much of an intro. Let's get straight to a tactical board and figure out what on earth went on. What on earth went on? We'll start with the first half. We'll start with the first half, where I thought United were pretty good, to be fair. It's weird to now be positive after watching what happened after that. But in the first half, I felt that United played pretty well for large parts of it. I thought we were set up pretty well. I felt we dealt with occasion pretty well. I thought we were good on the ball, and it was an improved performance. Let's quickly cover it. Coventry kind of used a press, but not enough of one in this 5-2-1-2 shape. In my opinion, they were far too cautious in the first half. They, they should have got at us, but they, they chose not to. So... What I'm going to do is we are going to split the two centre-backs either side of the goalkeeper and Onana is going to come between them and we're going to essentially have this sort of back three. Coventry are pressing with a front two, but initially they're not really putting any pressure on the ball. They're kind of standing there letting us have it. What we've done, I actually thought was quite clever in the first half, was Maguire, Onana and Casemiro took so many unnecessary touches on the ball. Now, they come across as unnecessary to, you know, just someone watching the game casually, if you like. It looks like they're taking too long on the ball, they're being lethargic, what are they doing? Actually, what they're doing is they're just waiting for Sims and Wright to come a few yards higher. So then Onana has a very, very easy pass out to wan on this side and also out to Dallow on this side of the pitch. It's actually quite clever because Coventry are in an extremely narrow front shape. The front two are really narrow. The midfield three is incredibly narrow. And the wingbacks didn't connect to the press. They stayed really deep on the United wingers. Giving United all of this space for wan in this area here. But also all the space in the world also for Dallow in this area here to get on the ball and play out from the back. United done that pretty well. It allowed us to force commentary back. From there, what United are going to do is move a little bit higher and take control of the ball. Really take control of the ball and dominate possession. Again, this is the first half we are talking about here. Of course, it went quite wrong quite quickly. But in the first half, again, United were okay in this phase. Kobe Maynard was playing as a solo pivot for large parts. McTominay would push higher up the pitch. So would Bruno Fernandes. And again, Coventry are in a really narrow 5-2-1-2 shape. The problem with the Coventry shape is... Just it's so passive and we've got so much room out wide. So again, when Casemiro and Maguire have got the ball, they're going to take extra touches and extra time. Eventually, Dallow and Wambasaka push even further up the pitch because they've got so much time on the ball. We're committing all these players forward. Rashford's going to come inside. Garnacho's going to come inside. And what you're going to see is that when we take our time on the ball here, we are basically waiting for Coventry to come towards us because it's going to open up a space somewhere else. So let's say Casemiro's got the ball. He's waiting for Wright to come towards him. The second that happens, he's going to release the ball to Kobe Mainu, And then our other players are going to drop a little bit deeper. We've really overloaded the centre of the pitch. The Coventry centre-backs didn't want to follow our players into these areas. Again, because they were quite cautious in the first half, quite standoffish. So the likes of Bruno Fernandes, Scott McTominay, were able to receive the ball in these parts of, in these areas, sorry. In these bits of space, in the pockets. Rashford as well, over on the left-hand side. Thought we had a good first half, although it tailed off. Garnacho's receiving the ball in spaces, sometimes Dallow's inverting. Again, we're receiving the ball really well in these areas. Sometimes Dallow could even drop deeper to get the ball, again, allow us to easily progress the ball. It was all quite easy for United in the first half. Then we get towards the final third of the pitch, where I thought we'd done pretty well. Again, I think Coventry's setup helped us a lot. The fact that defensively they had so few wide players. The midfield was incredibly narrow. The front two were incredibly narrow. What that meant was... The one, we could progress the ball easily through most of the pitch, but also once we got here, all we needed was some fairly simple rotations at times to quickly overload, outnumber, and really hurt the Coventry back line, and we've done that. Again, I felt that Rashford had a pretty good first half of his dribbling. His passing was poor. Uh, Wambasaka was a problem, again, being right-footed. So between the two of them, they got into really good positions, but didn't quite make it work. Like I said, Rashford dribbled well in the first half, but passing was poor. Wambasaka just doesn't offer us much there. I've said it a lot recently. He doesn't offer us too much. I wish we had someone who was left-footed and could swing across into the box or something like that. But we don't, and we, we struggled a little bit in that department. But eventually, with these rotations out wide, you know, the likes of Bruno Fernandes sustaining the attack in the midfield, we played pretty well. We were keeping the ball. We were rotating into these areas and then getting balls into the box. We saw Garnacho flash a couple across the box. We saw it from Rashford as well. And, of course, Dallow for the goal for Scott McTominay to put us 1-0 up. It's all working pretty well. Another goal comes from the set piece, and then in the second half, we start quite poorly, but we get the goal uh, from the transition with Bruno Fernandes. Whilst all that is happening, though, at half-time, Coventry do make a change. It's a fairly simple change. They change their structure to a back four shape. Now, they're going to push players forward like this. You will notice I'm a little bit low on energy. It's because, like you guys, I have just watched that football match, and I'm genuinely confused as to what I watched. Coventry are going to switch formation in the second half. Now, 
why does this see United go from cruising at 3-0 up, or 2-0, eventually 3-0 on the transition, but absolutely cruising, controlling the ball, dominating the game, dominating the space, mostly defending counter-attacks once we were able to deal with the long balls. How do we go from that to... I don't know what's called a second half an extra time. I don't have a word for it. How do we go from that first half to whatever we saw in the second half? I will never understand. It was pathetic. So Coventry changed to this kind of 4-2-3-1 shape. The shape they are more used to playing in. At times it's going to be a 4-1-4-1. It's going to let them to get more players up the pitch. It means they've got more players out wide. So our fullbacks now aren't an easy out ball. They're now pinned. They're going to challenge us. They're going to press us higher up the pitch. And we've seen it time and time again this season. We're not great at playing out from the back. They also played out from the back more regularly themselves. And because they were now in a more normal structure, if you like, our press couldn't deal with it. Again, we had that issue of the winger being too narrow on one side of the pitch. It's not the winger's fault, it's Ten Hag's fault. But the ball goes over the top like so to the fullback, they're out, and then our midfielder gets dragged over, which opens up a space in midfield. Yada, yada, yada. We've seen it all season long. That was the story of the second half. Tactically, I don't know what to say anymore. The first half, like I said, I genuinely thought it was quite good. I was really impressed with the way that we were playing. Uh, a, f a few flaws here and there, obviously, but I thought we were playing well. And we were in a good position. We looked really quite comfortable. Again, I think Coventry helped us with their setup. They were far too standoffish. They should have gone for us for the kill. If they'd gone for the kill early on, they could have won this game 4-0. I truly believe that. We are so, so vulnerable to any team which, one, tries to play out from the back, and two just tries to attack us and tries to press us. We are so, so vulnerable to that. And we saw it in the second half and we saw it in extra time. Again, tactically, I don't know that there's anything to talk about because it's just more of the same. It's just more of the same problem. We saw instances of our defence dropping off 100 yards, our midfield being open, our forwards pressing. But it's also disconnected. We've got Hoyland at times. Sometimes it was Bruno. Sometimes it was Rashford. Sometimes it was Garnacho Pressing a ball by themselves. It's, it's stupid. It's such a stupid thing to do because when you do it, you just get picked off all game long. You just get picked off and you could really see that physically the, the side fatigued in the second half, right? Is that because of a long season? Is it because of the training intensity? Is it exposing the players to... I don't know. I don't know what it is anymore. But in the second half, physically, we completely fell off. We completely fell off in this game. And when that happened, you know, when you physically fatigue, you mentally fatigue as well and you start to make quite poor decisions on the ball. And I feel that you always revert back to old habits, if you like. And your technical uh, security on the ball starts to give way a little bit to silly decisions, to rash playmaking, to pumping the ball forward for the sake of it, to go along from goal kicks and things like that. You just completely lose control of the game. Some of you might want hit, want me to sit here and, and rant and, and rage or whatever. It's not what the channel's about. It's not what the channel's about, so I'm not going to sit here and do that. Tactically, I thought we were good in the first half. I thought we were set up pretty well and our superior player quality got us into a great position. Second half, Coventry make a change. Fair play to their manager for making a good change. Fair play to their players for believing in it and playing into that system. In terms of United, it's the same tactical problem as we've had all season. And I am someone who has defended it a little bit, right? In the past 10 days or so, I've not, not even defended it as such. I've tried to explain it, why Ten Hag might be doing it. And a lot of the, the thing I've come up with is Ten Hag is trying to expose these players physically, technically, tactically and mentally. Fatigue them, baptism of fire is a term we've used to find out which players are good enough for next season, but also to improve them. So Dallow is someone who has you know benefited from that. Garnacho as well, they raise their level. Other players fall off and we've seen that this season as well. So I understand that idea. But in an FA Cup semi-final at 3-0 up, why would you not just sure up the system? Why would you stick with this just dumb, dumb out of possession structure? I'm not even using the term structure is so generous. It's so bad. Out of possession, it is embarrassing. At 3 0, again, I get the idea of, you know, we're, we're planning for next season. You 3 0 up in an FA Cup semi final, ignore next season just for 30 minutes, all right? And. Let's do one of three things. You've got three options. Either you drop really deep into a low block. Really deep. You compact all the space. You're 3-0 up. You don't need to attack. Just sit in your own box. Defend it. Counter-attack if you want. But you're 3-0 up. You don't need the ball. It's absolutely fine. That's one option. Option two is to kill the opposition by boring them to death with passes. 
pass it around the back, go from your goalkeeper to your centre back to your full back to your centre back to your midfielder to your centre back to your full back, bore them, just pass them to death at 3 0 down on a big Wembley pitch. It's amazing how quickly heads drop of the opposition when you play like that. We've seen City do it, we've seen some pretty average teams do it as well over the years. That's another option. The other option is to go for the kill, really go at them, really up the tempo to another level, sharpen it up even further than what I felt we were at on the, you know, the half time, I guess. Take it to a next level. Take it up a gear. Get someone like Ahmad on the pitch to freshen it up. You know, at 3-0, it is easy for players to kind of take it easy. You know who isn't going to take it easy? Someone who is desperate to prove that they should start. Get Ahmad on the pitch a little bit earlier. Get him on the pitch at 3-0. Why not? Because he's not going to let a standard slip because he's so keen to prove himself. Get him on the pitch. Rashford was playing poorly at the time. Get him on for Rashford. If you want to do Anthony Fogarnacho still, do it. I don't mind. Make that change. Okay. Do any of those three things, though, those three methods. Not tempo complete drop-off, which probably isn't on Ten Hag. Let's make that clear. It's on the players. Physically complete drop-off. It's on the players, but it's also on the, just the demand of all season. It's, it's what happens to players when they are exposed physically to what they've been exposed to this season. So Ten Hag's to blame, the players, I kind of get the bigger picture. But that was an issue to blame. The other issue, tactically, what on earth were we doing at 3-0 up? At 3-0 up, why am I seeing Maguire is, is joining the attack still? Why am I seeing us in situations where at 3-0 we're in the attack and we're playing like this? And when we lose possession, we're leaving these gaps. And poor old Casemiro, who... By the way, he done so well to even do anything in that game. Fair play to Casemiro. I was really impressed with his performance. I know he missed a penalty, and I hope he doesn't get too much hate for that. Fair play to him for playing in that system. Fair play to Harry Maguire as well for playing in that system at centre-back. Because if my days, it really demands something of them. And I felt actually that they both rose to the occasion. They are just done over by a system which exposes them so, so much. And again, I do get the idea... Let me make that clear. Those of you which are big fans of Eric Ten Hag still, I completely respect that. And I do get the idea over the course of the season to expose us for next season. I get it. I've done videos on it. You can watch it. But for purely FA Cup final, 60th minute, you're 3-0 up. Get some players on who want to make an impact to keep the intensity levels there. But get your side to keep the ball or to sit deep or to attack. Not to do this thing where the forwards press, the defence drops off, the midfield is nowhere to be seen. We start abandoning playing out from the back and we start going long on a much more regular basis to Hoyland who's struggling with his aerial duels. It doesn't make sense. Like I said, if you want a rant, there's going to be a channel somewhere with it. There's going to be lots of them, to be honest, because the performance was embarrassing. There's going to be rant channels out there. If you want to go watch them, go watch them. Genuinely, fair enough. That's what some people enjoy. It's not what I'm going to do on this channel. I've sat here, I feel, in a pretty calm manner. But... Phew, was bad it was really bad it was nearly an embarrassment for the football club one of it, it would have been up there i feel with the biggest embarrassments in the club's history not saying the biggest but it would have to have been up there particularly in the modern era and we've had some the positive you know i am someone who likes to try and spin it for 45 minutes i thought we saw a good performance we saw bruno fernandez could play in a possession side six chances created in the first half six key passes from him I think it was 93% pass accuracy. He was playing brilliantly. I thought Rashford was dribbling okay. I thought Garnacho was doing well. I thought Dallow was playing well. I thought Kobe Mainu, as usual. Maguire, Casemiro, they've done all right. Second half, it was complete fall off. The positive, the overwhelming positive, is we are in an FA Cup final. We've got another game at Wembley. We've got a chance to right the wrongs from last season against Manchester City. City aren't in the best form of their life at the moment. Maybe, I don't know. We're in the chat. No, we're not. We're in the FA Cup final. That's the big positive from today. We are in the FA Cup final, and despite everything which happened today, the players, most of them, maybe not Casemiro, but the rest of them kept their bottle in a shootout. Fair play to them. Fair play to Onana in gold as well. We're into the final of the FA Cup. A chance at silverware. We'll take it. We'll take it. We're there. We're there. But oi, 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 oi. it could have been different. It could have been different. I don't think I've got anything to add to today's video. Again, tactically, there is not that much to cover because it's the same thing. And I'm just fed up of repeating it. I, get, I dare say you guys are fed up of hearing it. So we're going to wrap it up there. Thank you guys for watching. United are into the FA Cup final. We've still got something to play for this season and we can still get a trophy. I hope you have enjoyed it. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.